Good morning and welcome to the Shared Lutheran Ministries of Fayette County. My name is Pastor Jill Vivro. I am the interim pastor here at the Shared Lutheran Ministries. Um, our assisting minister today is the one and only mm -hmm. Annie Miller. We're so thankful that you're here, Annie. Thank you. Thank you for, for leading worship with us today. Um, today is January 15th, and we are worshiping with you from St. John Lutheran Church in Ellinger, Texas. So here's what's happening for the rest of the week. On Tuesday, January 17th, the Shared Lutheran Ministries will have their council meeting in Fayetteville, 5.30 p.m. And then following, there will be the Congregation of Councils at 6.30, again in Fayetteville. On Wednesday, January 18th, our confirmation class will be meeting in Fayetteville at 6 p.m. Thursday, January 19th, the Quilton Group of Fayetteville will be meeting at, 6, at 10 in, in the morning. Saturday, January 21st, the breakfast Bible study will be taking place at the Birkeland Party Barn, and that is at 7.30 a.m. Also on Saturday, January 21st, the Amen food truck will be at Waldeck Lutheran Church at 10 a.m. Today we will be celebrating Holy Communion, so I invite you to get some form of bread and wine or juice just to set aside for that particular part of the service. We believe that Christ is truly present in his body and blood, and we believe that Christ will come into your home, into your worship space, and be present with you also, just as Christ is present with us in the bread and wine here today. Today is the second Sunday after Epiphany. So let us begin our worship with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Holy One, source of our renewal. We confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not yet practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven. In the name of Christ, our Savior. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, our strength and our Redeemer, by your Spirit hold us forever, that through your grace we may worship you and faithfully serve you, follow you, and joyfully find you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah, the 49th chapter. Here the servant, identified as Israel, speaks for herself and describes her honored mission. Called before her birth like Jeremiah and John the Baptist, the servant is not only to restore Israel. The servant's ultimate assignment is to bring news of God's victory to the ends of the earth. God in faithfulness has chosen Israel for this task. And now the reading. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord, and my reward is with God. And now the Lord says, Who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him? For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers, Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord, who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm chapter 40. I waited patiently upon the Lord, who stooped to me and heard my cry. The Lord lifted me out of the desolate pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a high cliff, making my footing sure. The Lord put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are those who trust in the Lord. They do not turn to enemies or to those who follow lies. Great are the wonders you have done. O Lord, my God, in your plans for us, none can be compared with you. Oh, that I could make them known and tell them, but they are more than I can count. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire. You have opened my ears. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. And so I said, here I am. I come in the scroll of the book. It is written of me. I love to do your will. Oh, my God, your law is deep within me. I proclaim righteousness in the great assembly. I have not restrained my lips, O Lord, you know. I have not hidden your righteousness in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your deliverance. I have not concealed your steadfast love and truth from the great assembly. You are the Lord. Do not withhold your compassion from me. May your steadfast love and your truth continually keep me safe. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians. A reading from the first chapter. Though God's church in Corinth is a fractious congregational beset with many conflicts, Paul opens this letter by spotlighting the multiple ways God has enriched and sustained its life as part of the divine call into the fellowship of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now the reading. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, 
together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. <laughs> The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walked by. He exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. And when Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? And they said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon, and he said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated to Peter. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace be with you from God our Creator and our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's interesting how stories like this morning's gospel lesson can spark memories from the past. Hearing the curiosity of John's two disciples, it takes me back to a time when I was curious myself about my faith. I believed in God, but I really didn't have a strong background in the church or in the Bible. And when I was asked about why I believed what I did, I discovered I didn't have an answer. And that left me hungry, wanting to know more. And it was this hunger that got me more involved in the church, and it eventually led me to seminary. So looking, seeing, and finding our gospel, it revolves around these actions. 
It begins with John the Baptist seeing Jesus and saying, Look, here is the Lamb of God. And his testimony to Jesus creates a curiosity among his disciples, so much so that they follow Jesus. And when Jesus sees that they are following, Jesus invites those same disciples to dig deeper when he asks them, What are you looking for? What are you looking for? I believe that this first question of Jesus is still important and it holds meaning for us today. What are you looking for? What is it that you long for today? What is it that you long for in your heart, in your total being? What is it that you hunger and thirst for? What drives you forward in your life of faith? As you say goodbye to an old year and welcome a new one, What are your hopes and dreams for the new year? What are you asking for? What are you looking for in your spiritual life? And maybe you haven't given it much thought, but this morning, Jesus comes to us asking, inviting, imploring us to go deeper. What are you looking for? Thinking back to my own curious time, I realized that in the hungering and longing to know more, I was really being true to my faith. I was taking serious Jesus' question, what are you looking for? And now fast forward 30 years to today, after being in ministry for almost 24 years, this question is still a valid one for me and for us all. Not only is it valid, not only is it valid, but I think that it creates a time of discernment, a time of searching, stretching, and growth. All too often, I think that we tend to avoid this question, not knowing how to answer it. Well, the disciples I don't think they were any better either. When Jesus asked them what they were looking for, instead of digging deeper, they tried to dodge the question by asking a question. They asked Jesus, where are you staying? Kind of reminds me of how we tend to avoid going deeper into conversations with others by talking about the weather. But the disciples' question, though, It does show interest. They are curious about Jesus. They want to know more about him. And they ask where he is headed. In Jesus, they sense that there is something special, something enduring and eternal. And they want to know how they can be a part of this. And perhaps they are even wanting to know what is in store for them. They want to know what the stakes are, what the cost would be of following him. What Jesus, he doesn't really give them an answer to their question. Instead, he invites them to come and see. When you look at the Gospel of John, this is the primary message of his Gospel. If you want to know the Word made flesh, come and see Jesus. If you want to know what love is like, come and see Jesus. If you want to know and experience the glory of God, come and see Jesus. If you want to be filled with the bread that never perishes, to quench your thirst with living water, come and see Jesus. And if you want to behold the light of the world, to experience the way, the truth, and the life, if you want to know God, 
come and see Jesus. Coming and seeing, it's not a one-time deal. It is a lifetime commitment. When we come and see, we do, we experience a Jesus that cannot be pinned down, a Jesus that can be put in a box of our own making. Instead, we discover a Jesus who is willing to go to places that we would have never thought of. Jesus is one who breaks through the barriers that we build through our hate and our fear and reaches out to all people bringing healing and love to them. Today's gospel story, it's not about just our seeing. At its core, it is about what Jesus sees. It is a story about Jesus' way of looking and what becomes possible when we dare to see as Jesus sees, to love as Jesus loves. To come and see. It may not always be easy or a set path. Following Jesus means that there will be times of change, times of new starts, of going places that we might not want to go. Which makes the question, what are you looking for, all the more important. Are we looking for Jesus, or are we looking for something else? Looking, seeing, finding. This is what faith is all about. We are called to look, to see, to find, not just once, but over and over again as Christians. Looking and seeing and finding. It's at the heart of discipleship. Anything less, well, it leads to death. It leads to the trap of the status quo. Instead, we are called to cultivate a willingness to look, to see and be seen, and to share in the telling of what we have discovered, to tell the story of God's love. But more importantly, we are, we are called to cultivate a willingness to start that process over again and again. Jesus' invitation to come and see, it is a lifetime commitment. But Jesus' invitation, it also leads to being witness to what we discover. We tell the story of Jesus through our voices, and through our actions. Going back to my own seeking, my own time of being curious, I would not be a pastor here today had it not been for the love and the support of my home congregation in Seguin and so many others. Through their encouragement, through their love and support, their willingness to let God work through them, I have been, been able to do things that I thought were impossible. Today's reading reminds us that to come and to see, to follow Jesus, we are called to be witnesses to for him. And one cannot be a witness or a disciple of Jesus from a distant, distance, no more than one can maintain an intimate relationship from afar. To love Christ is to draw close to him. To proclaim Christ as Lord and Savior is to reach out and to share the good news about him with others. And when we share the good news of God's love with others, that's when miracles happen. Our actions and our sharing become like the ripples in a pond after a pebble has been thrown. And like the ripples in the water, our actions spread out in the world, touching the lives of so many. What are you looking for? Jesus asks. Come, 
come see and know and share the love of God. It is here waiting for you. And blessed are we when we bring others the gift of love, peace, justice, hope, and mercy. Blessed are we when we do so by becoming a witness for the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On, on the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This is the time during the service which we come to God with our offerings of thanksgiving we would like to just take a moment right now to thank you, those who are listening or watching. We thank you for your commitment and for your your willingness to be um, Christ's hands and feet. We thank you for all that you bring to the Shared Lutheran Ministry. Let us pray. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You, you we may magnify and adore through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Put a new song in the mouth of our, your church. Inspire the baptized to tell of your faithfulness, 
sharing the good news of your salvation throughout the earth. Bless the witness of missionaries around the world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. The waters of baptism call us into life in the Spirit. Preserve the world's waters. Protect them from pollution. Support plants and animals who depend on them. And bring rain in places of drought. Guide us in protecting local waterways and in responding to devastating floods. Merciful God, receive our prayer. In Jesus, you are the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Show your mercy to all nations. Direct leaders to do your will. Fill governing bodies with righteousness. Equip judges with discernment and compassion. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You incline your ear to all who cry to you. Draw near to individuals and communities suffering violence, injustice, illness, or poverty. Hide them in the shadow of your hand and make us signs of your faithfulness to all in need. We pray especially for Joyce, Judy, Wendy, Kim, Ivan, Gerald, Joyce, Orville, Billy, Rose, Sheila, Russell, Sherry, Jennifer, Rhonda, Jeanette, Marilyn, Dennis, Marshall, Willie, Lillian, Maureen, Lorelai, Linda, Larry, and Janelda. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You are glorified in the servants you have called. With Martin Luther King, Jr., gives us bold trust in you, even when it feels like a sharp sword or polished arrow. Give us courage to receive your call to repentance and racial justice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for our call committee, for their work and our discernment in this process. Let your spirit guide us and them to seek and find our next pastor. We also pray for their, our future pastor, that as we are beginning our search for them, they will be open to the possibilities of SLM, and begin their search for us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. In every place and time, you have sanctified your people. We praise you for the testimony of those who have died in the faith, strengthening us as we wait for the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power, Revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and taste the joy of God. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ give you strength and peace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. 
Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. And now the God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless and strengthen you and uphold you today and always. Amen. Go in peace. Follow the way of Jesus. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.